are you? Whoa! The name's Rex. Rex Danger Vest. Galaxy defending archaeologist. Cowboy. Raptor trainer who likes building furniture, fuzzy heads, and having chiseled features previously hidden under baby fat. Whoa! Ah, enemy ship! That's a negative. That fat boy is my ship. Built her myself out of spare pieces. Let me show you around. Hey, you broke my ship. Listen, kid, you can build anything, but there ain't nothing you can't break. <laughs> I don't get it. Stop. Hammer time. Go with yes! Lego yes. Movie, the sequel. Yeah. Here we go with Thor's Hammer. Says everything's still awesome. It, it is indeed. Moment. I'm happy to report. Five years ago on this very show, I gave the first Lego Movie five out of five. My advice is to uh, watch it again as a refresher because the events of this one are directly linked and directly follow the first one. In that clip, that's Chris Pratt actually voicing two different characters, so double the paycheck for this one. But the gang's all back. This time they have to contend with some sinister space invaders. It is chock full of those great meta laughs. They do a little bit of a Mad Max parody at the beginning. Beginning. Thrilling action, dazzling visuals. I saw it on the IMAX with Deja. Couldn't get enough. Now, the plotting is occasionally zany. A lot of people had that problem with the first one, but I just think it's got such zeal and such verve to it. Um, it's also got all kinds of earworm-inducing pop songs. In fact, one of the best of them is during the credits, and it's a song about credits from the Lonely Island, Beck and Robin. So you want to make sure you park your butts in the seat uh, for that one. The, uh, you know what? It, it does drag, I guess, a little bit in the middle. But after watching the first one again, I found the same thing happened with that. So I thought it was a worthy follow-up. They take the characters in new directions. It's got all that heart and some nice life lessons, you know? With Will Ferrell and, and the dad character in the original, they introduced the mom in this one. And there's a little bit of sibling rivalry with that. Because it goes between the real world and the Lego world, right? And I, I love how they mesh it together. All oh, the Raptors were so good. I almost felt like in the first one, and I do the the movie was highly entertaining. Yeah. The edits were so frantic. Do you still get that quick pace in the sequel? Not quite as bad. It's still definitely at a fast pace, but I didn't find it as jarring. And for the sci-fi buff in me, I loved that a lot of it was a space adventure. Now, you didn't go to this movie alone. No. Let's see what four-year-old Deja thought about it. All right, Deja, we saw the Lego Movie 2 the other night. What did you think? Good. Why was it good? I like the raptor part and the songs. The raptor part and the songs. Okay, what's the verdict? Five out of eight. Whoa, five out of eight, not bad. <laughs> she got a whole new scale here. Five out of eight, she loves giving them out of eight. I can learn a lot from her, she's a tough critic. But I'm gonna go four out of five. Oh man. That's right. The raptors in the songs, you can't go wrong. So that's nine out of 13 hammers total from <laughs> your entire right. family, that's great. Pay for the movie and stay for the Velociraptors, I'm telling you. Okay, uh, Cold Pursuit, Liam Neeson, obviously an interesting week, press side given previous yeah. comments he made, but uh, let's talk about the movie before we talk about the momentum. All right, the original title for this was Hard Powder, and it's a remake of a 2014 Norwegian thriller about a seemingly mild-mannered snowplow driver in a small town in Colorado whose son is murdered by a uh, gang and he is hell-bent on revenge. Take a look. Dante says hello. I don't know any Dantes. Yes, you do. He worked at the Kehoe Airport with my son, Kyle. You know him too. <sighs> Tell me what happened. All right, Pops, there's the door, all right? Now, I don't know what igloo you crawled out of, but I think it's time you crawled back in. And trust me, that's your uh, best move. These type of thrillers has become a uh, familiar fare for Liam Neeson. Yeah. This film in Vancouver, right? Yeah, a lot in Vancouver. You can see the big sparrows at Olympic Village there. I've never seen those on the big screen. Also in parts of Fernie. What sets this apart from other Liam Neeson action vehicles, they try to go for dark comedy. So I was expecting this Fargo-esque kind of romp that navigates that fine line between comedy and drama, but it's not. The jokes are totally flat. And I just thought it was like a B-movie. He typically carries the film, and it does have some decent moments. And sure, it's got some sporadic laughs, but it wasn't witty. And they cram this great cast into the movie, uh, but they don't know what to do with them. Particularly Laura Dern, who plays his wife, completely underutilized. And when you have a talent like Laura Dern, you need to use her and showcase her abilities. Plus, Liam Neeson, in the middle of the film, does like a disappearing act while they examine this turf war between these rival gangs. So that was super disappointing. Also the villain Tom Bateman, he's a lovely British actor. He's trying to hide his accent and he can't do it. It reminded me of uh, Jamie Dornan in those Fifty Shades movies where he's trying to cover up his um, 
Irish accent. You love those movies, too. Oh, yeah, big fan. Sloppy editing, generic writing, and a waste of a talented cast. How many hours? Two out of five. Okay. Looks like the Lego movie is the one to watch this weekend. Oh, yeah.